Welcome to our third video in the series. In this video, we'll be deploying our grouper components or roles as Docker services. For each of the components, the grouper daemon, UI, and web service, we'll be building an institutional specific image. We'll deploy that image in Docker Swarm, and then we'll test and demonstrate that the container is working as expected. Let's start by creating our grouper daemon. Now, like most organizations, we've got some customizations we want to make to it. So we are going to look at uh, what we have in our grouper uh, daemon directory um, in our project. And you'll notice right now there actually isn't any changes um, that we need to, to make. We're simply going to pull from that image, our base image we created before, and we're just going to tell it, run the daemon. Um, we technically could do that from the command line when we create the service, but I think this is a little cleaner. And at the end of the day, we may end up having some uh, changes we want to make uh, specifically to our daemon. Maybe we want to tweak the uh, the logging, or you know, do some other things. Um, and so we still have a a project uh, for our daemon. Let's go ahead and build it. So we are going to change into the daemon directory and again this is a very very similar to the build that we have for our base image uh, we're simply going to tag this one though as our air quote organization which is organization and the grouper daemon um, and we're going to build our directory that we're currently in and then once that's done we're going to go ahead and push uh, that image with this new name and um, and make it available to our swarm host, wherever they might be, however many of them we might have uh, at that central location. So I'm just going to do that. This will be much faster than the other one. There we go, because we were, uh, we already have the image, the base image, um, so that was all set to go, and we really had nothing to uh, add to it other than that command. So let's go ahead and, and drop out. Uh, back to our, our main project directory. So let's go ahead and create this service. So what is a service? A service is a little bit different than the normal just Docker run. A service is going to tell Swarm, hey, this is going to be a long running you know, service that needs to be uh, monitored, maintained, all of those uh, fun things. So this is actually going to execute in the context of a Swarm. Um, we are going to run detached and we're going to give it a name. So this service will be called daemon. We could call it grouper daemon if we wanted to, whatever you want to. And uh, we're going to tell it to uh, be a host on the internal uh, network. That's so it can talk to the database, so we can talk to our uh, LDAP server. We're going to mount in a couple of secrets. Those are the only two files it needs. Uh, there's no UI. Um, no Apache uh, web server that needs any you know anything and, and no shipless service provider and we just have our image right here okay so let's go ahead and fire this off and there we go so now if we sudo docker service and we do a list we'll see we've got four services uh, remember that we have our um, our uh, LDAP, our database, and our IDP all running here. And we can see that the daemon is already up and running. And if we wanted to, we could do a logs daemon, and we'll see that it is in fact running. Hooray for us. Now, if I were to go through and do something, restart the server, um, kill the container, the container just naturally died for some reason, um, Docker Swarm knows it's supposed to keep one, and if we go back to that listing, we'll see it's supposed to keep one replica, and there is one currently running. But if that changed to zero, Swarm would work to restart and maintain kind of that homeostasis. Right now, really, the daemon, there's nothing too exciting to check out. Um, that is, uh, it's just running in the background. If we had some uh, loader jobs uh, configured, those would start pulling in. If we had some uh, you know, PSPNG uh, jobs running, we might start exporting data. So we're gonna work on the UI. 
get that service up and running. And uh, let's go look at what we have done um, for that one. So in this case, we are going to use Shibboleth IDP. I'm sorry, we're using the Shibboleth service provider, and we need to connect to our running Shibboleth IDP. So we've got our basic metadata here, uh, you know, very stripped down IDP metadata. And so that's perfect. And we need to load that up into uh, Etsy Shibboleth. So we needed to make that available to the service provider. Now the service provider is already expecting that file um, to exist. Actually, let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, it was in our config and secrets. So if we come down here, we can see just a few things real quick. We've got an entity ID. We're going to uh, pass the UID that's coming from uh, the attribute mapping that's going to come from the IDP. Um, and we're, that's how we're going to know who the user is. Uh, this is the entity ID of the IDP that we want to default um, send users to. And if we go down here just a little bit further, we will see it loading up the IDP metadata. All right. And then pretty much everything else is going to be the same. Uh, you'll notice the mit we're missing, though, uh, the use of those two um, signing uh, and, and encryption uh, certificate keys. All right, so let's back up here. We need to build our UI. Again, this is going to be really, really quick. And we're going to go ahead and push it to the registry. That is now done. Let's go ahead and change directories up. So now, uh, this is going to be very similar to the last one. We're going to um, run the user interface. We are going to uh, let this host run on our internal network. Now this is different. So this publish port basically means we are going to allow uh, our 443, we're going to map that 443 that's running inside the container, which is Apache web service, HTTP server, and we're going to expose it on the public interface. Now that means a little bit more when you're running in Swarm. Um, the publish port in Swarm, basically, regardless if let's say we've got 20 different Swarm members, and let's say our UI is running on three of those, well, it doesn't matter which of the Swarm members receives the request, it's going to bounce it to uh, across the, the Swarm network, in this case it would be this internal network, and find the appropriate host. Uh, we've got the two secrets we had before. We're also adding in the host key uh, for our TLS uh, encryption. And we've got uh, the Shibboleth um, 2 file that we talked about. And then both the uh, we're mapping both the host cert um, in two places. And mostly it's because it's a self-signed cert. Just the container is designed for a CA chain. So I'm technically mounting it twice, two different places. Um, technically, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, just if you were to analyze the uh, TLS handshake, um, it would be throwing uh, the chain, you know, would have this two files identical um, certificates in there. We're going to use our grouper UI image that we just created. Let's go ahead and run this. There we go. We will check our listing here. And our UI is up and running. Excellent. Uh, let's prove it. Now it might take a second to get going, but we can go to um, https colon slash slash. That was grouper dot example. Oh, helps if I can type right. Edu. Ah, I did that twice. Wow. Um, grouper. Let's go ahead and we'll add that exception in. Um, get sort of view and confirm it. And if you notice, we got redirected to IDP example edu. We're also getting a self signed certificate issue. Um, we're expecting that as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in as me. And I'm now in uh, the grouper UI. Fantastic. And we'll see that uh, everything seems to be working. I'm in here. I could uh, add another 
um, admin in if I wanted to. Oh. All right, perfect. And we'll add Bob in. And there we go. Our uh, grouper UI is uh, now up and running. So the last piece we need to do is uh, the web service. Um, this isn't going to be too much more exciting than anything else we've done uh, today. We look in our Docker file. All we're going to do is tell it the default commands. Okay, so we'll just make this quick. I'm just going to do it all at one shot. And there we go. So now we're going to uh, do the same thing. It's a, a web service is what we're going to call it. We're now going to mount 8443. So this container is running internally. It's running on 443. Um, that's the port that uh, would be available to anything that was on the internal network. Uh, again, it's a software defined kind of virtual networking technology. Uh, but we need to expose it publicly um, on 8443. We have our um, Hibernate's uh, properties, our subject. Um, notice, I don't think I covered this before, but notice that we've got our grouper underscore prefacing both of these. So the startup script, the init script, will basically go through and find these in the uh, run secrets uh, directory. And because they start with grouper, it'll get them copied into the um, opt uh, grouper slash uh, conf directory. And then from there, the script knows where to you know put them. Uh, for the various component that's being executed. Um, we're also providing the host key and um, a same kind of thing here. We're doing the same kind of trick uh, with the um, the TLS uh, certificate um, cert and the, uh, the certificate chain. This time we're running the web service image. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. Perfect. And if we run that, we should have an additional one. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to copy that. And uh, let's go ahead and open up a new one here. And we'll just replace this. Run that. Let's go ahead and add that exception, confirm it. And we will see that we actually have a, uh, a good, clean connection to the database. Um, there's been no diagnostic errors. Um, you know, everything's looking good. And if we wanted to, I think we actually have, uh, I think it's all that we can run. And we'll see a little bit more information. For example, there are no maintenance cleanup log jobs that have run uh, because, you know, the system hasn't been up um, running long enough. Um, uh, same thing with the built-in messaging daemon and enabled services and all these other things. They just haven't had a chance to run. You know, if, if I kept this running for 24 hours, then um, we would, uh, um, you know, see that these would populate differently on the screen. Okay, that is uh, getting your grouper environment up and running using the tier grouper image. In the next video, we'll talk about kind of the next steps and how would you actually take this and move this whole uh, concept forward.